NVIDIA wants your monitor money back, Disney wants your respect back, and AMD wants you to buy their CPUs back. I ruined that. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet. While well, you enjoy your breakfast this mo- Wednesday, August 21st, 2024. Just ruining the whole thing there, which is exactly what NVIDIA did with their G-Sync lineup of monitors, especially once they started supporting FreeSync and you could just get that supported on an NVIDIA GPU. Why did you have to buy a G-Sync monitor anymore? You just really didn't. And that's exactly why they're partnering with MediaTek to bring out G-Sync Pulsar monitors, because they want to get that money back so you don't need dedicated g-sync modules anymore and instead you need the g-sync pulsar MediaTek module which somehow it's not the same module but it's different it's a scaler that's going to be built into the monitors but especially since it's been noted by other companies that there's only 22 monitors in existence right now that have g-sync modules which five of them are for g-sync ultimate it's not like this is a large amount of monitors who are actively using G-Sync and a lot of times when you see G-Sync on a monitor it's just your run-of-the-mill variable refresh rate that's technically G-Sync compatible which is Nvidia's branding for things that support regular free sync. So with that, there's a whole host of new gaming monitors that got announced from various different companies like Acer, AOC, Asus, who are gonna be releasing these with the G-Sync Pulsar. But the Pulsar technology is kind of neat. It's supposed to fuse both the variable refresh rate technology as well as ultra low motion blur into one combined situation. It kind of got demonstrated at CES 2024, but it looks like at Gamescom, they're finally announcing some of these monitors that are gonna have it, including, I saw Asus's releasing a 1440p 480 hertz OLED gaming monitor with the G-Sync Pulsar setup. I'm intrigued to see how this is. I want to take a look experience it, see if it's any better than uh, just regular old variable refresh rate, but hopefully the idea is that it should bring the cost down on the G-Sync modules because now you're just dealing with MediaTek scalers. But it looks like this partnership between MediaTek and NVIDIA is going strong. We're expecting them to come out with a chip that potentially could go into a gaming handheld in the future or be on a, a desktop PC where MediaTek's making the CPU. I'm looking forward to those dates, just like I'm looking forward to today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Factor. Personally, I've been a fan of Factor for a while now, so I was super excited when they reached out to me. Because what I love about Factor is that I can have a delicious, fresh meal in just two minutes. I don't have to take time out of my day or away from work to prep and cook lunch, let alone brave the dreaded grocery store. So instead of wasting time in line or waiting for my overpriced takeout to arrive, I can spend more time entertaining you folks on the other side of the screen. And with over 35 chef-crafted meals to choose from each week, there's never a shortage of yummy options, with special diets such as keto, vegan, and more taken into account. Factor even offers gourmet recipes like filet mignon, truffle butter, or shrimp, so you can get a taste of the really, really good stuff all without the hassle of cooking from scratch. And good news too if you like to snack, because Factor has that covered with options like breakfast, smoothies, small bites, and more. Factor makes any meal easy no matter the size. No worries if you plan some time away or life gets busy because Factor lets you change up your order every week with options of four to 18 meals per week, or you can pause and reschedule orders at any time time. Unfortunately for me, I went on vacation and so it's the boys back at the office who are getting to enjoy my factor meals, which I wanted for myself. But you can try Factor's Chef Crafted Recipes for yourself today. You can click my link in the description below to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders with code UFD50. Huge thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Speaking of good partnerships like Factor sponsoring us here on Hot News, Black Myth Wukong got a lot of good sponsorships when it comes to NVIDIA GPUs. It was announced yesterday that there are eight different variants of Wukong themed GPUs that are being made out by various different manufacturers. Most of them are likely going to be a China only exclusive, but anytime we get custom GPUs like this, I'm just so excited. The MSI one's the weakest one. It's just the Wukong picture on the graphics card box, and then it looks like the scratches along the side are gold tinted instead, but you've got beautiful ones, not the eye chill. That one's just kind of normal. The Gigabyte one's not bad. I like the Regal pose right there. The Galax one's looking pretty nice. I enjoy that one as well as the iGame. This one's fantastic in my opinion. Right, this is my favorite out of the bunch. We already talked about the Zotac one in yesterday's episode of Hot News. And then there's this Gainward one, which is all right. But it seems to be a very popular game. A lot of this is 
due to the fact that it's succeeding tremendously in China. It is now officially the most played single player game of all time over on Steam. Over 2 million concurrent players. And when I looked at statistics for the breakdown of that, it was estimated that roughly 80% is coming from China. That was just according to one thing that I saw. So it may not be totally accurate, but Wukong appears to be a massive hit. I have some game codes because I've bought some NVIDIA GPUs. So I do think I'll be trying it out sooner rather than later. But in case you're trying to do that on an Intel CPU, they're still warning you that there might be some instability, despite the fact that Intel has released the microcode patch with certain motherboard manufacturers for certain motherboards. It's not available for everybody. It has been uh, reported in Black Myth Wukong that if you have the out of video memory issue, it could be potentially that you're running on a 13th or 14th gen Intel CPU and they're just not going to escape that until they have dealt with it completely and wholly and not just with the highest end motherboards that Asus and MSI and ASRock are putting out. You have to release it to all of them and that still hasn't happened. So we got to wait for that to be resolved and it looks like we don't have to wait for the arbitration to be resolved in the Disney Plus restaurant death case that was happening. We talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News. There was somebody who passed away at a Disney Springs restaurant because allegedly the restaurant did not adhere to some food allergies that were specified and when Disney was sued for it. They said that because the husband of the wife who passed away signed a arbitration clause with them for signing up to Disney Plus in 2019, they also had to go into arbitration because of this issue that happened at the restaurant. But now Disney is backing down from that, saying that they're abandoning the case for arbitration and specifically that they strive to put humanity above all other considerations. And with such unique circumstances as the ones in this case, we believe the situation warrants a sensitive approach to expertise a resolution for the family who have experienced such a painful loss. As such, we've decided to waive our right to arbitration and have the matter proceed in court, which obviously is only coming after essentially every media outlet reported on this. This is not something that they valued and put above all other considerations until there was public outcry. So take that for what it, what you will. It is good that uh, the family can potentially actually proceed with this in a court of law. However, despite Disney saying that they've done this, according to the court records, it has not yet it actually happened. So we'll see if they end up doing it. And we'll see if Reese does deals today to save you a little bit of money. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and we have some deals for you today. Starting off with this GameSir G8 Galileo mobile game controller, which to my surprise has Hall Effect joysticks for only $62.99, making it $37 off. But then next up, we have the Samsung 990 Evo NVMe M.2 SSD with the one terabyte version going for a very nice price of $69.99, making it $50 off. And then lastly, we have this LG Ultra Gear 26 7 inch 1440p 180 hertz 1000 r curved gaming monitor for only 169.99 making it 80 dollars off and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time and drove back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I'm going to need that extra cash you just saved me in order to replace my Pixel Watch 3 if I had one, because it's being reported that just like the Pixel Watch 1 and 2, they cannot be repaired. You have to just fully get them replaced because Google has no repair options for these smart watches. It's just a full replacement and that you should get the preferred care because then that'll make it easier for you to actually get the full replacement when you break your smartwatch, which I've, I've had quite a considerable number of smartwatches in my day. I don't think I've ever broken one to the point where I've even needed to repair them. Although, you know, I, I do understand the circumstances of like smashing a watch accidentally and causing that. But this is just one of those places where like Google's Pixel phone repair records is very good. They are partnering with iFixit. They have a lot of support on that side. The watch is nothing. And Apple uh, does have repair options for their watches. So, wow, that was a great conclusion to that one. Wow, I did it. Well, speaking of options, AMD wants to give you more options for your CPU choices. Specifically, if you're looking to jump on over to AM5, AMD is allegedly going to be launching the Ryzen 5 7600X3D in early September, which is just in about two weeks. This six core 12 thread CPU will be the first AM5X3D chip with 
six cores. The 5600 X3D was a Micro Center exclusive, but the 7600 X3D appears to be the entry level X3D chip for you to pick up on the new motherboard setups that are currently out. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're still not getting the 5500 X3D that's been appearing in EEC filings. The 5500 X3D could still be incredibly budget friendly and be there for AM4 budget gamers who want to spend less than $200 and get a really class leading CPU. But then you have the 7600 X3D, which hopefully shouldn't be too expensive, hopefully coming in at around that 250 to 299 price point, making it so that you get that X3D performance in case you don't need that high core count. Now, back when the 5600 X3D was rumored, uh, nobody really expected it to be a Micro Center exclusive. So I'm kind of hoping the same thing doesn't happen here with the 7600 X3D, that it is widely available and is not just going to be geolocated to a US retailer, making it very difficult for a lot of people to pick up. I hope it's an affordable CPU for a lot of people to pick up and makes it so that it's like the new budget gaming king. If you're like on a 4070 Ti or lower, you pick up the, 50, the 7600 X3D because it's just going to make a whole lot of financial sense. But uh, with that, the new X870, X870e motherboards launched yesterday day as well. So you could probably slap the 7600 X3D in one of those in case you want features that you're not going to ever use. And some of you think that I won't ever read your comments. And I probably won't, but let's get into some of them from yesterday's episode of Hot News. We've got the Hanger Hobbit saying the AMD vulnerability is a giant nothing burger as it requires the attacker to have physical access to your system, which if you have a bad guy literally plopped down in front of your PC, frankly, a hardware exploit is the least of your worries. And then Lucas saying, yeah, lots of YouTubers report on the whole deal very poorly. I will uh, harken back to when I talked about this. I address the fact that uh, it's not that you have to have physical access, it's that it gives you kernel level access. And there's ways to get kernel level access that don't require physical access to the PC. It, this is more than just a hacker sitting down right in front of your computer, like kernel level access is problematic in the first place. But if a hacker or a malicious actor has kernel level access, there are a lot of things that they can do. The big problem with Synclose is not the fact that it's a kernel level access exploit, it's that it stays there and it stays on the CPU despite whatever reinstall you happen to make. So it is potentially a bit more risky than other vulnerabilities that are out there because it can hide on the CPU. But it's not just they have to have physical access. They can remotely get kernel level access by you clicking on something that you weren't supposed to and giving it permissions that you, you, you weren't supposed to give it. There's ways for you to screw it up. Is it likely to happen? No, but it's also, it wasn't a good move by AMD to not support a CPU that only came out five years ago. I don't particularly want to get into the discussion of how much sync close matters when it, it it they just chose to say our Ryzen 3000 CPUs are out of support window so that when there is a massive security vulnerability, potentially it could be worse in the future. And they say, oh, we're just not going to patch it because it's outside of our uh, our support window for something that's still actively being used by a ton of people across the world. I just think it was a bad move. And then Shadow Lemon saying unrelated, but I hope that the Ryzen 9000 X3D won't be just 4% faster than the 7000 X3D. This is why expectations are good to be tempered. That way you aren't disappointed. Maybe. But speaking of disappointed, Old Time Benchmark says, nice video, I'm still waiting on my RMA for my 13900K that died on me. Rip. And just reading in the further comment replies, it's apparently been out for eight days, which isn't a terribly long time, but it seems like Intel needs to test the chip before they actually replace it, which I've argued before. I don't necessarily agree with that stance that Intel's taking here. I think that uh, this should be more of a no questions asked rather than we have to verify that you're not exploiting the fact that we've already confirmed that every CPU that is a 13900K is at risk and vulnerable to this. I think it would go a long way to the goodwill of the customers if you just replaced it and uh, ate the loss here because that would just mean that people can trust you in the future. That's that's my opinion. But what's not an opinion, Choma, the God of Hellfire says, I love when he says, while well, you enjoy your breakfast, while it's 1500 and I haven't had a breakfast and have had slept the total three hours, to which I replied, I never said that. I never say it. I don't say breakfast. Doesn't happen. Go back. Somebody tried to timestamp me. Rip Joe timestamp. You think I'm saying breakfast there? I'm not. There's no K. We're going to keep harping that every single time. And then we got users saying my 14900K fully died. I had it for about eight months and I'm going to switch to a 7950X 3D because I already have 64 gigabytes RAM from the Intel system. And I don't know what the RAM had to do with that, but I'm sorry for your loss. And then Ray saying Kyler's dust crumbs. 
Oh no, that's like the worst kind of dust crumbs. Huh? Your dust crumbs, buddy. You, you left them everywhere. What do I do? You uh, r repent. I don't know what he's doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm ending this episode of Hot News. I'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow. Those things you camp in? Like a tent? Is that a riff off the word repent? Yeah, I was... That was bad. I didn't know where I... I... You got dust crumbs coming out of your mouth now.